Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and um, this video honestly is going to be pretty boring in the sense that we're not learning any info, and learning is fun and exciting. Instead, I'm just really doing a brief overview of what you guys need to know in order to be successful on the final. So first, I just wanted to start off by talking about this formula right here. Oh, for some reason, I saw that lightsaber. There we go. There's my other laser pointer. Um, in order to determine what you guys need to get on the exam, um, in order to keep whatever grade you want, I know you guys all use that Roger Hub or something app, but this is super easy. Five times the grade you want minus four times the grade you had, and that tells you what you need on your final. So for this pre-calculus final exam, um, there are two parts to this test. The first part is a, is a free response and you guys cannot use a graphing calculator on it. However, if you really feel comfortable using a calculator and you prefer having a calculator, um, it's totally fine if you use a scientific calculator. This um, free response portion, it is eight questions, and it's worth 25% of your grade, and that's the very first portion of the test you're going to get. So I'm actually gonna be super specific and tell you guys what each question is going to um, pertain to. That way, you guys know exactly what to study. My whole intent with this, it's not to overwhelm you. It's to kind of talk through what topics do you need to know to be successful. So the first question goes all the way back to chapter one. Okay, and it's going to give you a graph. So a graph's going to be given to you, and it's going to ask you to find um, all these different things. Find domain, range, our increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals, and also our relative extrema. And um, we really haven't dealt with a lot of that stuff since the beginning of the year, so you're definitely going to want to go back and double check on that. Um, my advice studying-wise, you guys should have already begun to study, um, but as I kind of talked in class about it, um, I think the best way to do it is to spread out your studying, kind of tackle one chapter a night um, just because it makes it more manageable. And then at the end, you can kind of see, okay, what topics do I need to spend more time really looking through? Um, in terms number one, kind of going back to that, you guys also need to know how to use interval notation. That would be using parentheses and brackets. Remember, parentheses meant something was not included. Brackets meant it was included. Our second question comes from chapter two. So it's going to give you a higher order polynomial. It might be cubed. It might be to the fourth power. And your job is to graph it. Um, specific things I'm going to be asking you to do. You need to list the possible rational zeros. Um, you need to know how to find the zeros using synthetic division since you do not have a graphing calculator. And you need to know how to find the y-intercept based on that equation. Yep, I'm going quick through here. Um, numbers three and four, these are both from the chapter three test. Um, it deals with graphing exponential functions. So um, I'll give you an XY chart. You can use it if you want. You don't need to. So I'm looking at your graph, and then I'm also asking you to list the domain, the range, the equation of the asymptote, and whatever the y-intercept is. And if you guys think back to that chapter, we actually had um, like a whole section of the test that that's all we did. Our last four problems on the free response all correspond with chapter four. Five and six, um, it's going to ask you to find exact trig values of special angles and of quadrantals. And this is probably the one you guys need to study a little bit more. Um, so the way that it's going to work, it's going to give you a chart and it'll ask you to find sine of theta, cosine theta, tan theta, cotan theta, secant theta, cosecant theta. And it'll say something like theta equals 210 degrees or theta equals pi over two. And we would need to know how to find all those values. Seven and eight um, deal with graphing trig functions. You guys will have to list the amplitude, the period, and tell me if it's a flip or no flip. So those are the eight questions on the free response. In my mind, you guys should do really well in this because if you don't know this information, you know exactly what to study. Um, obviously, I'm the best source of help, so please email me, come see me. Um, we can talk about it in class when I see you next. But also, um, I would encourage you guys to maybe go back and look through chapter review videos if you're struggling on a concept, or even go back and look through um, a video on those notes. 
Moving right along, um, part two, this is the portion you can use your graphing calculator on. It is multiple choice, and it is not on your iPad. That might make a lot of you guys happy. I don't know what I'm drawing there. There we go. Um, it's actually through SchoolNet, but we're using a Scantron, so we don't need to worry if the Internet's going to be bad or not. So it is just multiple choice. You do not need your iPad. Um, there are 50 questions. And um, it is going to be worth 75% of your grade. So obviously, we're not going to go through every single um, concept, or I'm sorry, every single question. I'm just going to go through the concepts you guys need to know. I promise you, if I don't talk about it today, don't stress over it. Don't waste time studying. Chapter one, first thing, you need to know how to find the domain of a graph. We know domain means the x values. You guys also need to know how to find transformations of graphs. Okay, transformations of graphs, that's when we did like that 42 graph note handout where we talked about how does changing something in the equation um, affect the graph with like reflections and horizontal shifts and things like that. Um, I put a little asterisk by that because there are a ton of those. We need to know how to evaluate functions. So if it says like f of 2 equals blank, um, we know we would substitute 2 into f of x. I would also be aware of like how to do that with a piecewise function. We need to know how to determine if something is an even function or an odd function. Um, just a quick reminder on that, even functions, we know all the exponents are even. It's okay to have a constant. An even function means that it's symmetric about the y-axis. An odd function means that every exponent has to be odd. And we cannot have a constant for that because if it's symmetric, I'm sorry, if it's odd, that means it's symmetric about the origin. The rest of chapter one, um, function operations, so knowing how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions together. So like f of x equals x squared plus 5x minus 1, g of x equals 3x squared minus 1. How would we add those? How would we subtract those? Things like that. Composition of functions, that's when we go ahead and um, we, it looks like f of g of x and that open circle is what that composition operation looks like. And that's when we input one function into the other function. So we replace x with actually an expression. Last thing we need to know are inverse functions. So that's when we switch x and y and solve for y. Okay, moving on to chapter two. And in my mind, I think chapters one and two were the two toughest um, chapters, and they cover the most material. So um, my whole point in kind of listing out the concepts is I think it gives you a more accurate list of what you need to study rather than just being vague and saying, oh, chapter one. You actually have like a list, and you can check things off and say, yes, I get that, or no, I need help on that. Chapter two, end behavior. Um, that is figuring out what's happening to the left and what's happening to the right as x approaches infinity. We need to know how to find real zeros. Um, and if we're using our graphing calculator, which we are on this portion, we can use our graphing calculator to do that. So use your graphing calculator to help you as much as you can. We need to know how to find possible rational zeros. And um, just a reminder, the way that we do that, it is factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. We need to know how to find the max or min of a parabola, and we could do that either graphically or algebraically. We need to know how to divide using synthetic division. And then we get into some of the um, complex number stuff. We need to know how to find a complex conjugate. We need to know how to deal with operations with imaginary numbers. We need to know how to write an equation if we are given the zeros. So that's kind of working backwards. We need to know how to factor. And lastly, we need to know how to solve a synthetic division. And when you would need to do that versus just looking at your graphing calculator is when we know that there's going to be some imaginary answers. I'm sorry, my cat just stepped on the screen and there we go. Apparently he wants to learn pre-calculus chapter two as well. 
Okay, moving on here, chapter three. Chapter three was dealing with logarithms, and as you can see, there's not quite as many concepts we're gonna talk about here. Um, the first thing you guys need to know is how to change forms. So we need to change things from logarithm, um, logarithmic form to exponential form, and vice versa. You guys need to know how to use change of base. So if we had something like log base two of five, you would do log of five divided by log of two. We need to know how to expand and condense logarithms. So that was using the product property, the quotient property, and um, our power property. We need to know how to solve exponential equations. And I am giving two examples here. If we have a problem like this, we can actually write eight as two to the third power and have the same base. And then I can set those exponents equal to each other. If I have something like five equals two to the x power, I would need to either take a log of both sides or change it into logarithmic form and solve from there. And once again, I'm going through this stuff pretty quickly. I just wanna highlight topics. You guys can refer back to your notes and back to videos if you need clarification on things. Um, you guys need to know how to solve interest problems and we need to know that formula, y equals a times e to the bt power. I would say that the word problems um, on the final exam are not the super, super difficult ones. Okay, they are more like the medium level, um, one step interest problems. It's not going to be the one where we need to find the rate first and then apply it. Chapter four, and this is getting more into kind of what we've done recently. Um, the first thing is knowing all students take calculus. And obviously we need to know that a lot just when we're drawing out triangles, but specifically there's going to be questions like, what quadrant is sine less than zero and tangent is greater than zero? And so we would need to determine what quadrant that would happen in. You guys need to know the exact value of special triangles. So um, in this case, it might say something like cosecant of 5 pi over 6, and we would need to know how to solve that. There are some trig word problems. Once again, I would say those are more on the more basic um, of the spectrum of word problems. And you guys need to know how to use your calculator. So it might say like cosecant of 22 degrees. Hence the word degrees. In fact, if you're watching this right now and you have your calculator with you, if you're watching this, obviously you're watching it. Um, if you have your calculator with you, if you could change it into degrees right now, that would be awesome because we're going to need degrees for the entire final. Okay, and that brings us up to what we just took our test on, which is chapter five. So you guys need to know how to solve trig equations exactly. So that's like sine of x equals radical 2 over 2. You need to memorize the double angle formulas and the sum and difference formulas. The reason why I'm forcing you to memorize, I know you're like groaning at home right now, um, but there are actually questions on the test that are matching on those formulas. So you're getting points for just knowing them. I am going to give you the reciprocal, the Pythagorean, and the half angle formulas. You do not get a note card, but I'm giving these to you because there's no problems on the test that just deal with the knowledge of that formula. It's only application. So I'm happy to give those to you so you can just use them as you simplify. Um, we need to know how to simplify trig expressions. I would especially kind of um, practice some of the ones that deal with factoring because I think that was probably the toughest thing for us this past chapter. You guys need to know how to find the half angle, find double angle, and also use sum and difference. If I didn't mention it in this video, don't study about it. Don't study about it. Don't study it. Don't worry about it, okay? Um, my whole goal here is to give you guys some clarity in what to study so that you can effectively use your study time. So um, definitely come into class with questions. As you guys are studying, if you have questions, feel free to email me, okay? Um, hopefully this just allows you to know what you need to spend your time with.